Welcome back to another episode of The Sportsman. We have Joey Coldcuts over there. I am the big ticket. We are this is Wednesdays now, guys. This is this is yeah, our first this, Wednesday. This feels episode. different. There's a little different vibe in the air tonight. I'll tell you what. Doing this on a Tuesday, it's just it's it's unprecedented territory, but I like what I'm feeling. I like what I'm feeling too. I mean, I I think I this is the latest I think we've ever done this podcast. It is poor Mr. Anderson. I tell you what, you're we're putting this poor man through the gauntlet. We're releasing on a Wednesday and filming on a Tuesday night at 6 40 p.m. Yeah. You know, the turnaround time is not ideal. But here we are. We're here. We're sticking to it. The sportsman is alive more than ever, some may yeah. say. Right. Instagram page has what close to 500 people now. Tumming. It. It's humming. Well, I wouldn't say humming. It's <laughs> if it was a bird, it'd be like a humming bird because it's got a little whisper to it, but it is alive. <laughs> it I is mean, alive. compared to what where it's been, like I think he's 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 doing a good job oh, of building no, no, building no. the page a little bit. Mr. Anderson is should be credited yeah. a million times for the success um and for the growth of the page, quite frankly, because he is keeping our hand to the just just to the pedal and and i'll tell you what I, hand to the pedal the fuck does that mean that that, that was a boss so. that one fell apart you 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 ripped off the needle of the grenade and you just couldn't get it out of your hands and it blew up yeah, all over you. yeah it kind of blew up in my face <laughs> well i'll tell you what though he and he did a great job getting the word out as well like you know for those people that need to know i think he he let them all know we're on wednesdays now you're desperate enough to know the sportsman's new time yeah, if you're that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think of a grenade pop blowing up in our face. Let's just address it right out and and put it out in the open. First thing first, we got banged on our picks this week. It was oh, not yeah. pretty. It that was wasn't. not by any means salvageable. Yeah. It was a disaster. You just gotta fade us, man. And our picks of the week, <laughs> just gotta dude. Fade I us. was up twenty-seven to nothing yeah. in a game I needed minus one and a half for the Los Angeles Chargers, and I had to watch them lose the game. I mean, it, that that is as bad a beat as, as I've I, I've seen in a long time. Well, we'll get into all of it, but I think I've gotten more DMs than I ever have this past week. All about how I gotta stick it to you, and you know what? I intend to stick it to you with this Trevor Lawrence thing. You're going to fight tooth and nail uh, to tell I'm me about that because he was terrible for half the game. And he won the game. Playing, he won the game and he led them back to an I'm epic comeback. Now, if they're not playing against a deadbeat coach who should not be in the NFL, that game for all intents and purposes is over. If they're playing a team with half a wit, that game is done. You throw four interceptions in the first half. I, I mean, he salvaged the game, so good for him. But by no means is this guy a hero or a star. Oh, come on. He's not a hero? He He's led not them a hero 27 you, to nothing, dog. He almost threw the game away to begin with. <laughs> hey, you don't want to point fingers at somebody. I, I'm all for Brandon Staley. He's an easy target and, and a deserved target. I like Justin Herbert a lot, but boy, oh boy, did he not show up there in that Why second half either. The ball more? Yeah, they got an all-time running back with this Austin Eckler guy. The guy's a bowling ball. You got what a lot of people consider this up-and-coming quarterback who's already a top-five quarterback. Hey, they just blew it. They blew it. I, I mean, I, I mean, listen, kudos to the Jaguars for winning the game and sticking with it. But I would say you got to fault the Chargers as much as you would give the Jaguars credit because they lost that game. The only worst second half performance I've seen in the NFL this year was from an interim coach in Jeff Saturday yeah. at the Indianapolis Colts who just fell off the rails uh, against the Vikings early on. And I, I tell you what, this wasn't far off from, from that because no. it was just terribly managed from start to finish. And you know what? I, good for the Jags. They're going to get their asses waxed this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, who will never have had an easier path to the fucking AFC championship. It is as simple. This is well, going to be a bloodbath. 
I uh, well, it might be a bloodbath. I will, I'll give you that, but I think an easier road would have been the Chargers because they're a team that always steps on their their own feet. They cannot get out of their own way. At least the 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 Jags have proven all season long. Maybe it's not the prettiest, but they they've got some dog in them. They've got some fight, and they they don't quit. I've seen them come back to win in the second half quite a lot this season, and the whole team. Etienne, they got a good defense. Trevor yeah, Lawrence they're, is they're a part of bad, it. So I, 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 I think the Chargers would be a, an easier path, quite honestly, well, because they remember, find they, played, they, they look for the Chargers. Ways to lose. The, the Chargers played the Chiefs a few weeks left in the season, mm-hmm. um, in their regular season this year, and and if not for a miracle last drive by Mahomes and company who won the game. They were on the verge of losing to the Chargers. I, I just don't – it's a, one of those teams you just can't understand them, man. They look unbelievable one minute. The next minute they look like they don't know how to play football. It, uh, it's like them and the Raiders are the two teams that, like, look for ways to lose. It's like awful, They just man. refuse to win a I game. I this. Your, your old ex-boy, Doug Peterson, this guy's got a set of stones on him. <laughs> Because sure when I saw him going for two when they scored that touchdown, and it was the difference between it being a field goal to tie the game or if they went for two and got it, it was a two-point game. But if they miss that there, then they got to go out and score another touchdown. That was one of the ballsier plays I've seen called. And yeah. kudos to him. I mean, this guy, I guess he's just got stones or he's just a, 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 a I don't know. He's either I've been trying to figure that out for years, man. With the, with the Eagles, like he he's the guy who came play up with calls he calls Philly the special. You know, well, actually, Nick Foles. That's a Nick Foles play. But you know, he he you know he's he was a ballsy guy. He would kick onsides kicks like to start second half. He's got a set of plums on him. But I <laughs> I have, to this day am like, is this guy an idiot? And it works out, or or is he some kind of genius with a, with a, a whole bunch of confidence? What, I can't tell. I can't tell. I will say this right now. Yeah. All right. If by some miracle of miracles, Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars beat Kansas City this week, I will finally say this guy is a Hall of Fame quarterback in the making. What? If they okay. win this game, if they All right. I like if that. they win this game, they're not going to win this game. If they win this game, though. I will finally say, you know what, Tick? I've been dead wrong, and you have been right. Wow. I, I like that. I, well, what would you do if – what if they cover? What if they make it a close game and they cover well, I don't the even know what the spread is. We it's, eight and a half, it's eight and a half. I mean, if they cover and play a tight game, you don't have to say he's a future Hall of Fame quarterback of the making. I will give you got to start giving I, I him – I will give kudos where kudos are deserved. The Part of the thing is I can't tip my cap. I can see the guy was resilient. He showed heart. But you throw four interceptions in any first half of any football game and you're down 27 nothing. that game should be over. So regardless, I know he came back strong in the second half, but he put them in a position where they should have been dead to right. Now, if he plays well and they keep it close next week, I will give him kudos. And if they win the game, I, I will go on record on the sportsman and say that Trevor Lawrence is a future Hall of Famer. But I just don't see any way that that happens. I really don't, and I I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of quarterbacks out there that have won, found a way to win, and the stats were ugly, and their first half was ugly. So I'm not going to deny it. I mean, it was it was a nasty first half, but he went on to throw four touchdowns and no no interceptions. I don't think in the second half. I don't think he had a single interception in the second half. Well, so I would hope not. I mean, this guy. Can... I mean, he he just showed that he he's he's got a little dog in him, man. And the the team maybe not obviously probably not this year. Next year, watch out. And the year like them and the Lions are like two teams that you really want to watch out for. They got a lot of good things. Cooking. I think the Lions look uh, as a team as a whole a lot lot better than the Jaguars well maybe but I'm just saying that they're both two teams historically shitty well they're there trending are, upwards they're yeah trending they're trending in the right, right direction, direction. Yeah. and Doug Peterson I think deserves a ton of credit sure I'm well I'm still trying to figure it out you know I'll tell you who doesn't deserve the credit though is that Brandon Staley I'm with you I'm I'm with you on that that do guy's got to go too many risks too many risks the, do you think the Chargers and I asked Beard on this question yesterday when we were filming our podcast for the brilliant dumb show do you think that the chargers should spend a first round pick to get sean payton as their coach for next year 
I don't think any coach is worth a first round pick. I, that's I just think my opinion. That's an egregious amount yeah. to pay for a coach. A first round pick is uh, is, is a is a life changing. It, it could be it could be yeah. massive for any franchise. To put that on a coach, I don't think I, I just to I be would, honest. What is what has Sean Payton really done? He had he won a Super Bowl with one oh, of the best Payton. quarterbacks of all Sean time, Payton. and and he had a thousand good teams after that and couldn't win. I mean, I'm just not sold. And he did the bounty gate thing. I I just am not sold that he is such a game changing once in a lifetime coach that you need to be spending a first round pick on them they certainly need a new coach there's no doubt about that they do need a new one but i ain't spending a first round pick for sean payton I, i'm just not gonna do it i I, I, I agree with you i don't think i think it's too much to be honest i just was wondering what your thoughts were yeah i don't think any i mean unless you bring back vince lombardi from the dead you know or maybe you could get bill belichick but even bill lately i mean i it, it's tough you gotta coach with what you got on the field you know you can only do so much for a team in one year. You know what I mean? Maybe over a couple of years, it can make a big impact. I like what Dan, Motor City Dan's done with the Lions, if I'm being honest. He's changed the whole mindset of that team. But yeah, yeah he, he, pick, he's a culture guy for sure. And he's he's made those that group of losers learn how to win again. I now mean, what's going to happen with them is they're either going to be super successful or the bell curve is going to come spiking down and it's not going to, it's not going to work. But I like to think that they're, they're trending upward in a big way. I'm curious to see. I mean, last week we, we mentioned what a great job they've done with Jared Goff and how he's really turned things around, but I'm curious if they stick with him or if they decide in the draft to try maybe move up or, or, or trade or, or do something to get a different quarterback. I'll be interested to see because I, I still just can't trust Garrett, Jared Goff as much as he has turned it around. He was a guy that you could still play and, and you could develop a rookie quarterback around, you yeah. know, still bring him in. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Speaking of rookie quarterbacks, I need, we I mean, that needs to be brought up because this Brock Purdy, I I don't want to buy in, but at this point, I think you have no choice. This is a young man who, like, you just think is like everything has fallen into place. If Bob was a quarterback right now in the league, he'd be Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Everything has just perfectly aligned for this young man. And you know what? Kudos to him. He has taken the bull by the horns. He's taken a once in a lifetime opportunity where the two quarterbacks way ahead of him. I don't even think he was even projected who knows to play at all. Cause Trey Lance was supposed to be their guy. Then they had Garoppolo as their, you know, the guy who's been there for ages and looked like he could do it again. And both of those guys go down. And then this guy gets the opportunity of a lifetime. And my God, the kid looks like he's been here 10 years already. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he looks like a guy who's just like he just there's nothing super special about him other than his mindset. Like he's just he's he's confident and he's not he doesn't seem like he's overthinking like what well, we got to do this and then we got to do this. And we, he's just looking at what do we got to do right now? I got to get it for I got to make this pass. And we got to get it first. He doesn't look beyond the play that he's currently in. He's not thinking about anything other than right now. And that presence, that that ability to stay present especially for a young quarterback, is a huge, huge gift. So He's very savvy I, in the pocket. Yeah. And he looks comfortable, and he makes the right decisions. Like, yeah. it doesn't always have to be super flashy, but he doesn't make the big mistake that you expect a guy in that position to make. And, you know, he started out a little shaky this past week, but he came out in the second half and absolutely cooked. The yeah. Season. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I mean – and the Seahawks aren't a great team by any means, but I mean the fact that he did that in the playoffs as a rookie quarterback who didn't even play most of the season. He's, I think he played what the last four or five games. It's impressive, man. It's impressive. I mean, and, uh, they've got a shitload of talent around him. But well, you're right. Debo Samuel is back. Yeah, he's a difference maker. He's a difference. But you're right. As, though, a, he, as, as a team who's still left in the mix, as the Eagles, who you know who, who are projected to go to NFC Championships. They got to be scary a little bit on the radar, knowing that that might be the crash collision course that you end up running into this. You know, if you get by the Giants this week, which we'll discuss in a minute. Yeah. Well, before we get there, I want to talk to you a little bit about. Let's dive into our our picks now. So my pick was 
Thir- minus 13 and a half. I had the Bills. We we had this whole thing about how we thought DeMar uh, Hamlin, yeah. was, they're going to rally. They're, they got to play with a lot of heart right now. Dolphins don't have Tua. They're going to fucking destroy him. I look like an idiot. I normally do, but I look like <laughs> a real big one. Again, this, this quarterback who stepped in for the Dolphins played well, man. He played really – I don't even know who the fuck that guy's name is. Skylar Thompson? Skylar Thompson, yeah. Who is he? He's a rookie. I, I don't – couldn't tell you where he went to school. I tell you what, know. he's ten times the quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is. They That's he gave true. them a much better chance, and 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 it seemed like I had uh, I put a prize picks out for the public because I I just I said you know what screw it I'm going to put a prize picks out. I went two for three. The one that I missed I needed Jalen Waddle over forty seven and a half, and he was three or and a half yards short. He got forty four yards, but he dropped three massive opportunities and i'll be honest skylar thompson every single time put the ball exactly where he had to like he had guys in the first half dropping the ball every which way i I thought he looked very good i mean you had to be feeling confident when the bills went up 17 to nothing in the first quarter sure sure did sure did joseph i thought i was also confident when my pick was a 27 to fucking nothing and i only (laughs) needed minus one and a half i mean can we i mean all right, let's stay. Let's stay on track. Yeah, we both got bet. You really got banged, but I, I put a lot of faith in in your guy. But our, I love him too, Josh Allen. And God, they just could not. The fourth quarter was a try. I was really getting nervous in the fourth quarter. They, they almost could, lost. They could the score. Game. They almost lost the game. They have got to be. I mean, I'm rooting for them more than anyone at this point. No mm-hmm. offense to your Eagles, but like I just, they've never won a Super Bowl. And Josh is just such a guy, such a good guy. And and you know, and he's you know he's he's in our camp. So I'm rooting like crazy for them. But I'll be honest, they have got to pick it up because I the Bengals are not going to roll over this week by any means. And if the if the Bills don't don't play a game for a full 60 minutes like they haven't been, they could easily find themselves out of the playoffs. It was it was nerve wracking. Well, that's another team that, you know, there was a lot of periods in that Bengals Ravens game where it didn't look like it, it, I mean, Huntley played pretty well. And if it wasn't for that crazy goal line fumble oh. where the Ravens were about to go ahead, and this this guy fucking took it all the way back. This guy who's from Cincinnati took it all Over, the yeah. way back, and and that ended up being the last score of the game. And and they were the ones who went up, but it was like the Ravens were this close with the with a backup. And if you're well, Lamar we, Jackson, we you like, got to be like fucking right. Yeah, we man. both like the Ravens if Lamar was playing, and I seem to think they probably would have. I mean, who knows? I. I don't know if you heard J.K. Dobbins after the game just absolutely roast Huntley and said if Lamar was playing, they would have won the game and he needed to get the ball more. Yeah, he was pretty vocal about some stuff. Not that he didn't get the ball. I mean, he still had a, a touchdown. He had four or five catches and he had, he had a, what, like 60 yards rushing. So he, he played well, but uh, I don't know. I The Bengals are a scrappy team. Like they find ways to win. They don't do it pretty. Um, and I, I just think that they, like being in the Super Bowl last year, has given them this team a lot of confidence. I know they didn't win pretty this last week, but they still won. And I would, I'm interested to hear what the spread is, but I, I would think the Bengals are going to be scrappy this week against the Bills. It's not going to be. A I mean, the ball. Bengals are just a scrappy team. But going back to J.K. Dobbins thing, I, I don't like that shit, man. I don't like, I, you know, it's one thing if you've you've had Carson Wentz and he's your he's your number one quarterback and he's just not playing up to it. But when this guy Tyler Huntley, who's who's come in in a backup position to step in and he's doing all he can. I mean, he's not a gifted. I thrower. thought he played pretty damn he, good. He put for, them in a position to win. He put them in a position to win. Win. And for this guy to come out and say, you know, if we had Lamar, you would have won when a lot of people thought Lamar could have suited up and should have played that game. I don't know what his health is like, but a lot of people think that Michael Vick sure did. And um, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, what are you God. giving shit for the backup for who's doing everything he can? Who's only, you know, it's such a horrible position. And, and he puts you in a position to win. You know, that that's those are the facts. So I, I don't I like that. JK, you, but, but I also think. Sometimes the players they don't speak their minds enough, and and this guy he didn't shy away from. Well, I do like when they speak their minds, but I just think, go, what are you going after the fucking backup for, man? You know, it's like he's just doing his best. 
You know, yeah. but I, I I do like when they speak up on quarterbacks who just aren't getting it done. Like if you were upset with Matt Ryan by the end of the Falcons run, like I get it. You know, obviously the Carson Wentz thing. There's sometimes I would totally understand. I'm personally but... shocked more guys haven't complained about Matt Ryan because this guy is garbage. He must be a great guy. He must be a wonderful human being because no one says shit about him and he deserves. He must be buying his guys for <laughs> yeah. Christmas. He's probably buying them quad ATVs and dirt bikes and cars. Yeah. And- the whole offensive line's got Lamborghinis. Kudos to <laughs> Matt Ryan. And that's why no one says shit about him. But he deserves a lot of shit, man. I mean. This guy, man. I don't know. He's still collecting paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. And then the only other game and I think we didn't touch on from last week was the Giants and the Vikings. But that's just classic Vikings. We both doing what called. They do. That's yeah. the one of the games that we had our finger on the pulse. I've said this all year long, and I've had people like the Jet and people who are Vikings, like they're on the Vikings bandwagon for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe you you, you get a, a glare of Justin Jefferson's grills and you get excited. This team is fraudulent. They are not good. The Packers beat the living pulp out of them. And this was a team that couldn't beat the Lions when they had nothing to play for the last week of the playoff of the regular season to make the playoffs. The Vikings, man, Kirk Cousins will never, ever win a Super Bowl. I'm saying it right now. I'm sorry. Might be a great guy. Might be fun in the locker room, wearing the chains. Everybody likes him. You like that, this and that. And he has a good season. He will never win a Super Bowl. This guy is, he's hes fraudulent, man. And so is that team. The defense is not nearly good enough just to win. They, they're not good enough to stop people. And by the way, as bad as the, the Vikings are, the Giants impressed me a lot with how they won that yeah. game. Brian Dayball deserves a ton of credit. Saquon Barkley is back, baby. Friend of the pod. This guy looked absolutely electric from start to finish. And let's just call the monkey in the room. Danny Dimes played a fucking, maybe the game of his life. Yeah, he did. He, he played, played extremely played well. He played amazing. And, and I'll be honest with you, Tick. If they put up that performance again this week, that defensive line is tough. The Eagles are not going to just roll this team over. Oh, I it know. is going to be a game. I hate to say it, but it is. It's not going to be easy. I mean, if I, I'm an Eagles fan, I'm wildly nervous. I wanted to see the Vikings. I wanted to see them. You should have wanted to see the Vikings. Yeah, I, I, but for multiple reasons. I don't want to face the Giants, who are one of our biggest uh, rivals, and we have all of the expectations on our back and yes. they have none. And that's going to play completely in their favor. Yes. And yeah, Danny times, man, when he's, when he puts it all together, he looks like a really great quarterback. And I <clears throat> guess that's what the giants keep seeing enough of to keep him around. And it's like, you want to see him, but he just so often doesn't play a full four quarters but with all that put together. He always makes mistakes. He has the Kirk Cousins syndrome. He's got the Carson Wentz thing. But, man, if he does that two weeks in a row, the Eagles, we're in trouble, man. We're in big, big trouble. I, I'm really nervous. I'm not looking forward to the game. I might not even be able to watch most whoa, of the game. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm sweating thinking about it right now. I'm not. <laughs> it's 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 nerve-wracking. Those those Giants have nothing to play for. I mean, now, there's you zero expectations. Will you game solo by yourself, or will you watch it with the fellas? Ah, uh, it's a great question. I think it's Saturday night. I think it's this Saturday night. Um, wow. uh, but I, I could be convinced to watch it with the fellas, but I, I might need I to just like lock myself be, away with a, with I a feel whole like pizza be pie. More in your comfort zone watching it solo. I I got it now. Call it how I see it, and I don't blame you at all. I I think the key for the Eagles this week, they got to come out of the gates. Firing. I think if they come out early and they take like a seven nothing or ten nothing lead, the Giants start to question things and they can't play their brand of football. They have to force you know Daniel Jones to actually be a playmaker rather than just play the running game and rely on their defense. And I think that's how you need to win. You guys need if you guys don't come out of the gates firing and by halftime it's like a three-point game or tied or less than a touchdown lead. 
it, it could come down to the absolute line. I agree. We need we need to come out firing right away and catch them on their on their heels there. Um, and so they can be scrambling. I agree with everything you just said. I think that's exact. But the big question is how healthy is Jalen Hurts? You know, is he is he a hundred percent? If he's a hundred percent putting all my chips on the Eagles. Well, we don't we've know. Seen one playoff game out of Jalen Hurts, and it might be the worst game he's ever played last year was just an Yeah, but that was a different guy. That it is was a different it. guy. I, I do have faith that he will come out again. It's just a depend. It's dependent. He played last week, so that gives you some some faith and some hope that he's not banged up too bad. He had a week to rest. Um, you know what he reminds me of? He remind he's like the the Dan Campbell of quarterbacks. He's just such a culture guy. He's doing whatever it takes. He's gritty, and, yeah. and the whole locker room loves him. And and it's like he's not Tom Brady. He's not Peyton Manning. He never will be. But he's just a I'm gonna go out and win this game for us kind of guy. I think the X factor for you on on Saturday or Sunday, whenever they play, is AJ Brown. If they can get him going, always oh, is. That when they get him going, when he starts making down the field catches and starts spreading the field, it opens the running game for Miles Sanders, the play action, everything starts to open up and it's a game changer. If they don't get him involved, it's uh, that's when it's going to be problematic. Now, well, that was what happened last season. We didn't have A.J. Brown, but arguably our best player then was Devonta uh, Smith. And remember, I was, I was – yeah, but I was I was losing my mind that they just would not get the ball into his hands, and it's like, what what are we do? I can't go back there. I'm gonna lose my <laughs> mind again. I can't go back. Is Goddard out for the season, or is he gonna be playing this week? Uh well, I heard that he's not gonna be playing this week, but I also heard that Lamar Jackson was gonna be playing last week. So. <laughs> You know, and then, oh, I guess, oh, yeah, I forgot our Monday night game. And then we'll move into the picks and and this this next weekend. But Cowboys, Buccaneers, Tom Brady couldn't do it. Oh, my God. I'm pretty happy about it. Is cooked. (laughs) Put a fork in him. He's done. This guy, in the course of one year, he's written out. His 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 legacy and like I'm I'm not taking anything away. He's the best to ever do it. I will give him absolute credit where credit is deserved. But this guy, he, you know, you thought maybe he was superhuman stuff. This guy looks as human as he's ever looked. And I tell you what, he should have read the signs. The writing was on the wall. In one year, he proceeded to look worse than he's ever been. The guy's completely useless now. And he's lost his entire family. I mean, I don't, not to mention <laughs> he lost like $35 million on Bitcoin. This guy is or. just absolutely in a kamikaze tailspin. I do think that he could have another g- good year with, with a team like the 49ers or with the Raiders. He just needs an offensive line, which is exactly what the Buccaneers don't have. And he's playing like he's scared to get broken as a 46 year old man should be seeing 25 year old, 300 pound men running him. glimpses from him where he made that first touchdown pass and it was a beautiful throw and he had some good throws, but like he just, he's immobile. Like, he yeah. Can't. It looks like he's wading through quicksand. And like the second someone <laughs> comes within a fucking. You know, uh, uh, you know, a whisper away from him. The guy is turtling on the ground. Like it's, it's, it's bad. It's not good. I'll tell you what. You know, you guys do the buy and sell segment. I'm selling TB12 program every day of the week. I, I think, he, I think it's full of shit. That guy. I mean, he looks good. He looks good, but he's just not moving well. Well, he looks like, like he's a plastic jaw. You yeah, said that before. I think he's buying himself good health way more than his TB12 program has given him anything naturally. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, moving you on. You it all with the Cowboys? I was, and it's probably the only time ever where I wasn't necessarily rooting for them, but I was totally fine with them winning. Because that was one of the games – where it looked so obvious at the spread that it should have been the Cowboys. Right. You just, you just, with yeah. a guy like Brady, you just almost have to like second guess a little bit because time, time again, he's come up big. Like he's never looked so small and that team looks <laughs> horrific. Kudos to the Cow. I, by the way, Dak Prescott played one of the better games I've seen him play in the last couple of years. Yeah, he played a really good game, but the thing is, I still don't trust him. Like, I still think if I if the Eagles end up having to face him somehow, uh, 
I, I trust them to, to to fold back into who they are. I trust Mike McCarthy to fold back into who he is. I trust Dak to make enough mistakes to lose the football game. So I'm not terrible. Maybe I should be more nervous about him, but I'm just not. And it was it was nice to see Tom Brady go home when he should have. And uh, that's that on him. Um, this week, though, we have the Eagles playing the Giants Saturday night, man. That's going to be one hell of a football game. It's going to be one hell of a football game. And I'm going to watch it alone in this apartment with a big old Vita's pizza pie by you myself. Made your decision. I made my decision. Yeah, you talked me into it. And I when I started talking about pizza, made. I was like, I'm already sold. Um, but hey, the, the Eagles are laying seven and a half. They're in Lincoln Financial. They're in Philadelphia. What do you think? Seven and a half? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I think it's the Eagles, fine. I think the Eagles will win the game, but I honestly I think it's going down to like a field goal, man. I I was wildly impressed with what I saw out of the Giants this week, and I think because it's a divisional game, it's going to be a bloodbath. And I I think seven and a half is a lot of points. I I'm gonna take the Giants. I'm gonna take the Eagles, and I'm gonna lay the seven and a half, and I'll tell you why. I think it's gonna be a close game throughout most throughout most of it i think saquon's going to go off i think danny dimes is going to continue playing pretty well i think in that fourth quarter we pull away i think we 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 we, we get a couple touchdowns i'm on not going to argue with it because as long as we both have a different team we can't go over like that's we, true <laughs> true I, I mean as bad as we have been we have been very bad the last couple of weeks. Um, did we have the whole list or just our 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 b- picks of the week? Did did Anderson do our whole like our whole thing? I can tell you right now, I did not do well. I had the Giants. I I, I was one and zero for the Giants. I took the Seahawks. That's one and one. I took the Chargers. That's one and two. I took <laughs> the fucking Bucks. That's one and three. And what was the other game? The Bengals. I took I took the Bengals, which they didn't cover. I was one in four. I have to be somewhere in that same kind of realm. I mean, maybe I was two and three. I think you 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 took the Bills. Yeah, you sure did. Oh, and I took the Bills too. I'm one in five. Yeah. I was one and five, Tick. Yeah. The Bills. Yeah, you were. You took yeah. the Jags. So yeah, that's one and one. You took the Giants with me. That's two and one. You're already better than me. Yeah. You took, this, you took the Niners. Yeah. All right. That's three and one. Okay. Yeah. I think you, I lost everything else, though. I think I, I took the Ravens. I think I think I took I took the, the Bucks. So I, I was 500. You took the Bengals and you took the Bucks. Right. 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 So, but you were, you probably finished around three and three. That's not that bad. Yeah. I yes, was horrific. Not. I was absolutely horrific. <laughs> Faye Joe is a real thing right now. But your your heart was in the right place, and that's what I hope the listeners remember. Um, well, move- by the way, I just will like to go on the record and say I didn't I didn't lay a single bet this week. So I'm I'm you know I'm, I'm making picks on this thing, but I I was very cautious because I these games are so hard to gauge. I'm taking the Eagles seven and a half. I'm laying the seven and a half here. Uh, moving on to the morning game or the afternoon game is the Jags. They're playing the Chiefs, and the Chiefs are laying eight and a half. I think I know where you're heading with this. <laughs> I am I am all over the Chiefs. Eight and a half right. is not much, man. I think no, they can not. easily win this by two touchdowns. Mahomes is an absolute force to be reckoned with. This guy is no joke. I, I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm not I'm not overthinking it at all. Give me the Chiefs. I'm taking in, the Jags. Uh, I'm taking the Jags, man. I'm taking I'm taking the big fat stones of Doug Peterson. I'm taking the dog of Trevor Lawrence. And I just like the way they're playing right now, man. I mean, I don't think they're going to win this game, but I think they can keep it close. And I think they're gonna they're gonna keep it within eight and a half, at least by the end. Maybe they go down big, they come back, they don't do enough to win. Chiefs do let teams come back sometimes. They do. They they win the game, but they let guys get back into it and sniff hope. So I'm gonna go with the Jags. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to take the eight and a half points. Uh, moving on to Sunday, we have the Bengals playing the bills. Bills are laying five. Oh, they keep banging me, man. They keep banging me. This bills team. This is really hard. 
I'm going to go with my gut, though. I'm going to go with my heart. My, actually, I'm not going with my gut. I'm going with my heart. My gut says, I think the Bengals can win this game. My heart says, go with Josh and let him lead you to the promised land. Hmm. Give me the Bills, plus, uh, minus five. I, ha- I hate the pick. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. <laughs> Just like I hated the Bucks pick. I hate it, but I'm going with my heart because I can't go against my guy, Josh. I, I have no I would have no issue with the Bengals money line pick on this game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I am sorry, Han. I am going to it's in Orchard Park. That's the only thing I like about the Bills in this game. I, I don't I think the Bengals are gonna win this game. I really do. I I, I, so I hate too, that it's man. gonna be a frigid uh afternoon in Orchard Park. It's going to play to the Bills hand, but this Bengals team is scrappy, man. I trust in Josh so much. I believe in him. I think he's the real deal. And more than anything, I want that Chiefs Bills rematch more than God knows. It's, (laughs) it's what we deserve. Yeah, it's, 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 it's absolutely what we deserve and I hope we get it, but I, I gotta say Joe Burrow was put throwing his hat in the ring too. Like he deserves to be right there with, with Patrick I Mahomes. I would feel comfortable as mm-hmm. all hell if I had a bet slip with the Bengals money line. On. And I feel really comfortable. I feel very comfortable. To the taking point the five where I points. actually think plus five feels phenomenal. I'm taking the five. I'm taking the plus five. I'm taking the Bengals and hopefully I'm running to the bank here. Um, in the last game of the weekend, uh, rounding out the NFC here, we have the Cowboys playing the 49ers in San Francisco. San Francisco's laying four. Oh, God, man. It's another tough fucking – you never know what Cowboys team you're getting. You really don't. If I, if, if I knew that I was getting – Something reminiscent of what I saw this last week out of Dak, I'd say that the Cowboys are the pick for sure, especially against a rookie quarterback. Give me the Niners. Yeah, I think everyone and their mother is going to take the Niners here and lay the four points. And listen, I'm going to be one of them. I'm one of them. Because that Cowboys team, I just don't trust them. The same reason I wasn't worried about them winning last week. I think they're going to be handled easily by the 49ers Okay, I'm going Cowboys. I'm switching. Whoa. So then we don't have a single pick on the same side. Uh, that's the main reason I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> Either one guy's going over for six, or are you, we can't lose every game. I just right. think that I think it's good. I don't know. I got, <laughs> give me the Cowboys. You seem lost at sea here, man. What do Dude, you? What do you... I, I, my confidence is so shaken <laughs> after last week. Up is down, down is up, <laughs> left is right sideways back way I you got to do like what george did on seinfeld you just got to do the opposite of everything you would do i should i should just bet the opposite god it feels like that's what you're doing what is it pl- is my plus four cowboys yeah yeah give me the cowboys all right well i'm gonna take the 49ers i don't feel great about it but i do think i certainly think they're gonna win the game um but i think I'm they should handle the that i think everybody's gonna bet the niners i agree i think everyone's but sometimes everybody's right and I think we are and this I'm week. wrong. <laughs> Especially the way you've been playing. Um, What's all right, your pick man. Of the week? My pick of the week is gonna be the Eagles. I'm rolling with the Eagles. I think everyone, I think everyone's going with the Giants with those seven and a half points, especially seeing what Danny Dimes did this past week. But the Eagles are the Eagles. They they won 14 games this week. Jalen Hurts is gonna be back. And again, it's gonna be a fourth quarter pull away. I think they'll win by two touchdowns. Book it. Oh, man, I got to give a pick of the week, don't I? They sure do. You sure do, Joey D. The only pick I'm going to go with is the Chiefs minus eight and a half against okay. those lowly Jets. <laughs> all right. You know what? It'll, it'll get be all again. the sweeter the when, way, when they win the game. Dade Cutsy is a real thing right now. Just it, it sure is, and I cannot wait till the Jags cover. And you, you, you have to come on here and say five nice things about Trevor Lawrence if they cover. What did I say it was five? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you need to come on here and say five nice things. It, if they win, I'll say if they win. No, no, if they win, I already said I will herald Trevor Lawrence as a future Hall of Fame quarterback wow. on the sports. Boy, oh boy. Okay, you got to say three nice things if they cover, though. If they keep, if it's a good game. God, wait, I just like. 
That, okay. That's what I'm going to... You, you've talked such trash about this guy. I'm going to force you to say three nice things if they cover and play a good game against the Chiefs. You're just going to have to do it. You're going to have to eat crow. You're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to say a couple nice things. Fair enough. All right. All right. So we are on Wednesdays now. It's the first episode coming out on Wednesday. Feels good. Uh, I kind of like the night podcast as opposed to the morning podcast. I don't know about you, but I think we're starting to get the ball rolling here, buddy. Yeah, I do. And if you're if you are one of our 400, well, I think it's more faithful now, which is great. Um, and you enjoy the show. You know, there's a lot of people who DM me to say that we didn't even know that this show exists. I think that the Instagram and the posts are starting to help with that. But listen, we got a lot of people between the two of us who we have followed on Instagram and social media. We've got to we've got to translate these people over to the sportsmen. I don't care if you want to comment that we stink. I'll take it. Whatever, oh, sure. whatever it is, I want the engagement. <laughs> bring the engagement. Subscribe, comment, like, be part of the sportsman. Uh, this is this is not for our egos. This is just fun. We enjoy yeah. it. Eventually, I'd love to get some some you know fanfare questions in that we could take a few questions in and answer. Yeah, that'd them be nice. And, and put those you know put those forward in our episodes. Um, but yeah, this is just, it's a fun thing. Everybody loves sports. We love sports. That's why we're sportsmen. I'm sure there's a lot more sportsmen out there. We want to see you guys and have you follow along and enjoy our episodes and be part of what we do. That's, I, I, that's first and foremost. And, and we got to get Jet back on here maybe next week. Yeah, Jet, and I was talking to Bear Down. I think Bear Down might come on next week or, or, we, or following. We should have Bear Down before like, Either the AFC and NFC Championship week oh, that'd or be the sick. Super Bowl week. Yeah. And I do a big thing with him. We were supposed to have Bear Down on a few weeks ago and it just didn't work out. But yes, we absolutely need that young man on the show. I think he would help translate to a lot of fun and, and back and forth conversations and disputes. And, and just, I think he'd help with numbers for sure. Bear Down is undisputed. Anyway, folks, that is another episode of The Sportsman. Over there is Joey Colcutts. I'm the big ticket, and we are The Sportsman. Till next week, folks.